you know, I, I think disinvestment is hugely important because how we use our money is one of the most important moral issues. And so often people say, well, money's got nothing to do with morality. Actually, that's not true. Do you spend your money on armaments or do you spend it on education? Um, do you spend it on health or, or self-gratification? And, and so how we spend this money is, is decisive. And it must be guided by moral principles uh, if we're going to find a sustainable future. I really want to stress, too, the importance of caring for all of life. You know, the Vienna Declaration and the Universal Declaration of Human Rights is concerned only about people and our human rights. And we have to recognize that we must care for all of life. We must recognize that we're integrally part of this planet and we cannot live without caring for this planet and its well-being. Um, so we need, a, I call it, a Copernican revolution where instead of putting our economic interests at the center of life and our well-being, we put the planet. And if we look after the planet, the planet will look after ourselves. And the greatest threat at the moment is probably climate change and the continuing burning of fossil fuels. And somehow we have to stop this rapacious greed by the, the fossil fuel companies. And so the whole fossil-free divestment uh, campaign is crucially important, and it's something that I, th I hope all faith communities and interested and concerned bodies and organizations take up. We cannot continue to invest in fossil fuels. And you know, at the moment, fossil fuel industry is, is gets subsidized and is spending something like $680 billion a year in research and investment. And, and instead of we spend that on renewable energy, and we'll find solutions, we'll find answers. But at the moment, we are continuing to invest in what is only a destructive uh, future. So, so please, we really want to uh, support the disinvestment campaign for fossil fuels. You know, we, we have to recognize that we can't behave just as we want, and that we have to live within the laws of nature. And at the moment, we, we think that we can produce chemicals and pollution and not pay the price. And so we, life has evolved to this incredible, beautiful state now over millennia, millions of years. And we are destroying that very process of evolution through our pollution, through our toxic chemicals. And so we have got to recognize that there are universal laws to which we should be obedient and we can't do just what we want. And, and when it comes then to tackling climate change, we must seek... Uh, 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 an agreement that is fair to all nations, that is ambitious because at the moment we're just not meeting the, the severity of climate change and it must be binding because nations are, are rather like human beings. You know, they can be selfish and self-concerned and just seek their own wealth regardless of consequences. And so that we're seeing among the nations of the world. I mean, the United States um, has said they wouldn't sign uh, any agreement that would limit their own economic development. And, and so we must have binding agreements to which all nations uh, adhere. You know, I think it's really important that faith communities are involved um, because we're the only organizations that are not beholden to shareholders or to the voters. And um, it's so exciting that now the, the Pope and faith communities are coming forward and saying that we have to care for the natural environment um, and, and, and to overcome climate change um, because it is a moral issue now. And, and so that can then speak to our, our heart, our deepest beliefs. And, and those are what can change our behavior. Um, you know, multinational corporations are not going to change their behavior because they're committed to earning money and making profit. But we need to come from a, a, a mass movement of people from faith communities to saying we must do what is right. You know, there's a real challenge to change our world at this time. Um, and I think the faith communities can, must pay, play a leading role. Um, we are driven in our materialism um, by the multinational capitalist organizations. I've just got to say it. They want to continue growing and, and to have this greedy growth on a finite planet is just not sustainable. And, and we need to come in and say, 
Actually, there are far more important things for a healthy planet, a, a, a wonderful, a pleasant lifestyle with clean water and fresh air, which are far more important than owning the latest gadget. And, and so um, this materialism, I believe, is driven by capitalism, and we must overcome that incessant, constant drive for more and more possessions and more and more wealth. This doesn't mean to say that we're not trying to meet the challenges of people for fundamental needs. But you know, this is a planet of abundance, and, and we can share all the abundance of this planet. But at the moment, we've made it a planet of scarcity. Uh, and an example is food. Uh, almost two billion people go hungry every day, and yet we waste 40% of our food. It's chucked away every day. So we need to change our very structures in our system and transform them. And thank goodness, uh, as we bring our moral and, and, and value systems to bear, we are beginning to change, and, and therein lies a hope for the future. I'm Bishop Jeff Davies, and you've been watching me on Invent Africa.